Hello, Professor Sargent here with you again. Going to have a hopefully quick discussion of graphs of polynomial functions, talking about the number of x intercepts, um, whether we have the graph touching or crossing the x axis at an x intercept, and the number of turns. What do we mean by a turn? Okay, so I want you to notice for this quadratic, which is a graph of y equals x squared. Let me bring up the screen here. We have one x-intercept. It's at zero, zero. And the vertex is where it changes from a decrease to an increase as we move left to right. So one turn or turning point. What we mean by a turning point is a place where it switches from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. And so, in other words, a place where we have uh, at the least a local minimum or local maximum. For the parabola, that's the vertex. And on this, it is a local, uh, not only a local minimum, but a absolute minimum. Now, if we shift that up by two units, we no longer have an x-intercept at all, and yet still one turning point. If we shift it down, now we've got two x-intercepts and still one turning point. So we could have for y equals x squared, or uh, in general, for some quadratic function, some degree two polynomial, two, one, or zero x-intercepts, and only one turn. Now, if we look at a degree three, y equals x cubed, that has no turning points. AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. There are no turning points there. It might look at the origin like it's about to make a change between increasing and decreasing, but it never pulls it off. And there's one intercept. Here's another cubic function, y equals 3x cubed plus 19 halves x squared plus 9x. Well, that has one x-intercept still. But if you follow where I'm moving the cursor here, here it switches from increasing to decreasing, and then very shortly after, relatively speaking, from decreasing to increasing. So now we're seeing two turns. If I shift that up by two and a half units, now we have still two turns, but three, one, two, and three, x-intercepts. In general, well, let's not quite get to it just yet. Let's take a look at y equals x to the fourth. One turn. 
and one x-intercept. Show you what I have so far on the board here. And if we go back, now if we look at x, the quantity x minus one times another, uh, let's see, what do I have there? Quantity x plus one, quantity x minus one times quantity x squared plus one. If you multiply that all out, we would have another fourth degree polynomial and we still only have one turn, but there would be two x-intercepts on that. Here and here, the turns here. There's another one that if we multiplied it out, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. On the previous one, x times x is x squared, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So it would be degree four when you expand it. And same here, x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth. Here we have one, two, three, four x-intercepts. And the turns decreasing to increasing right about here, that's one. Around here, it's switching from increasing to decreasing for a total of two. And then around here, from decreasing to increasing, and that's three. So the point I want to make is that the number of x-intercepts that you can have, if the degree is n, then the number of x-intercepts you're going to have is at most n. You could have less than that. Whereas the number of turns, um, the quadratics had one. That's one less than the degree. The cubics had at most two, but could have less. Two is one less than the degree of a cubic. And for the fourth degree, the most number of turns we got was three, that's one less than a degree. So the number of turns less than or equal to n minus one.